And we are live. Charles Preston, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ken. Yeah, glad to have you. So we'll uh we'll get into the into the technology and, and all the cool stuff you guys are doing. But we'll we'll take a we'll start with a, a trip down and that's what we call it memory lane, but we'll we'll take a we'll take a jog back a couple of years, figure out uh what made you you and and how you got to this point. So this is great. You're the uh first episode of 2023. So thanks for joining us here. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very honored. Awesome. Yes, as you should be. <laughs> now, all right, so look, uh, as I mentioned, this is kind of origin story and, and kind of figure out uh, you as a CEO. And and, uh, and so let's let's take, a, let's take a, a jog down memory lane. So let's tell us, tell the audience where you're from, uh, where'd you go to school? Let's kind of give us the, uh, the old rundown there. Okay, so I'm from Manchester, in the UK, um, and this will, yeah, this will probably sound pretty, uh, I guess, pretty boring. But um, I was born in Manchester, uh, born in Stockport, and Greater Manchester. Um, I grew up in Manchester. I went to school in Manchester, <laughs> and uh, our school system works a little bit differently in the UK than it does in, in the UK. So, um, you know, whereas whereas you would say you went to college, we went to I went to university, um, I went to university in Manchester. So I, I, I was like born. Bred, educated, and uh, employed in Manchester with a short stop for one year in Reading, which uh, is is not glamorous. So very cool. So do you, I mean, so I guess is it appropriate to ask which colors you wear when you know, being from Manchester? I know there's a lot of uh, divisiveness and and uh, uh, between yeah. uh, you know Manchester City and United. And do you have a, a preference? Yeah, so so I am a, a lifelong Manchester United fan. Oh, all right, good deal, good deal. Yeah, which is good. I mean, we won at the weekend, so I can say. Oh, there you go. So you get the bragging rights. Uh, yeah, you get the bragging rights. We haven't done a lot of that recently, so um, it was it was nice to get the win. And you'll take it. Um, so, so from Manchester, I guess. Uh, I guess let's get into the how did how do you get into tech? Like, what's what's the origin story? What's the the story behind that? So. Um, I did my degree in uh, business and computing, and I always had a you know an interest in in, in computing anyway. From a you know I, I guess I wouldn't say like an early age, but certainly through my you know um, high school years. Um, and then when I left university, I I worked unfortunately in, uh, in, in, I worked in insurance for a couple of years, um, but then I got my first job. A software vendor, um, and that was kind of like my first like graduate job. So uh, that was selling um, that was selling software to uh, like Fortune 500 companies, um, primarily around terminal services and Citrix. So that was kind of like my footstep in. I mean, you, footstep into tech, but you know, mainly my footstep into sales. You know, so I you know became a you know became a, a salesperson in uh, in the IT industry. I have kind of, I guess in some ways you could say I'm, I'm still a salesperson in the IT industry. Um, but yeah, that's how I got into it. So I, I worked for a company called AppSense for, for seven years and um, and that's where the story began. Awesome, awesome. So uh, so you made the, the, the switch, was it just, uh, what was it about the insurance industry that uh, made you wanna or, or not acknowledge, but or made you want to leave, I guess. Yeah, well, when I say like insurance, I mean, I was selling car insurance on the phone, <laughs> like inbound calling. And, you know, because, you know, what happened is uh, I got the job part time while I was at university and um, I just had like a like an aptitude for uh, for sales. Um, and I felt when I left university that it'd be good to have an employment uh, like a consistent employment record of being at the same place for maybe like two or three years before I went in, went in and tried to get a job elsewhere. Um, so it was nothing. It was nothing particular about insurance as such. Um, but you know, there was obviously more opportunity to go and start selling, you know, bigger ticket uh, deals in IT. So that's why I left. Got it. So was it was that the grind? I mean, you talk, was it is all inbound? Was it outbound or all inbound? All yeah. inbound. Yeah, yeah. So you, gonna, you know, just gonna went and warm the seat for eight hours. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, got it. So you made the uh, you made the 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 shift into the tech space, and then you've got some pretty interesting uh, roles. I know there's um, 
you know, there's maybe a couple couple uh, jaunts in between, but I think you were at Veeam for, for quite a while? Yeah, I was at Veeam for sort of between 18 months and two years, I think. Um, yes, yeah, so that was good. Veeam, a great company, you know, incredible, incredible software, you know, the, uh, you know, I've experienced like, I've experienced the IT industry from a, a few different angles. So, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've worked at, um, you know, event, I've worked at a vendor that sell direct, you know, very well and don't do the channel very well. Um, I've worked in the channel. Um, and then I've worked for Veeam, who I'd say, are, you know, super channel friendly. Mm -hmm. Like, so, so I saw it from the other side of the fence, basically, like how to, you know, how, how to be a good, um, you know, a good channel business, how to, you know, do business well with your partners and work with distribution really well. Um, and so, yeah, it's interesting to kind of see the contrast between the two. Um, but yeah, Veeam were great. Um, I worked for uh, Equinet, who got uh, acquired uh, by a company called Kelway in the UK, who eventually went on to be acquired by CDW. So I'm sure you're familiar with CDW. So, sure. um, so yeah, so, you know, I've worked in the channel, I've worked at, you know, at, uh, at vendors, um, and I've worked in, you know, I guess more more recently at, um, before you secure at NCC Group, which is one of the biggest cybersecurity companies in, you know, certainly the UK, Europe, and, you know, they've got a good presence globally as well. Yeah, so you're yeah, at that NCC group, and I guess I guess there was a maybe a jumping off point uh, where you said, "Look, I got to go out and 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 start my own thing." Or <laughs> you know, what uh, what were the uh, the events that led up to that? I mean, you know, going out there and found the use secure. Is it uh, you saw an opportunity, or, you know, a hole in the marketplace? Was it just were you frustrated? I mean, what uh, you know, what, yeah. the, what prompted the leap? Yeah, so there's a, there's a few things that came together when I was at when when I was at NCC. So um, I guess aspirationally, I'd always um, wanted to to set something up on my own. Like I didn't know what I wanted to set it up, but I kind of I had that um, like a lot of people do. You know, I had that kind of you know drive to think I could do something independently and you know and, and make something of it. It was just kind of finding the right idea. Um, and then when I was at NCC Group, NCC Group are pretty much you know, entirely um, a consultancy division. So they do a lot of pen testing, a lot of ISO consultancy, a lot, a lot of just, you know, general broader cyber consultancy. Um, but it's all, you know, predicated on day rate uh, business, right? So um, at that point, in the, at that point, we're kind of uh, pre-GDPR, so we're, we're a couple of years out from, from, from GDPR coming in. Obviously, it's a you know, big shift in people's uh, attitude towards compliance, attitudes towards cyber, attitudes towards you know data privacy, and you know when I was talking to customers, one of the things that, that we, one of the things that we couldn't do is training was always delivered by a senior consultant, right? So you would go, so we'd go into an organization and talk about training their training their staff, and it was always right. We'll get a consultant in, and you know they'll charge you know x amount per day for x amount of days. Right? And there was so many issues with that in terms of, you know, you might not get everyone in the room. It's very difficult to measure the, um, the it's kind of adherence and the, whether people have taken it on board. Um, it's, it, it wasn't very cost effective. Um, you know, at senior level consultants, very expensive mm -hmm. to, to, to do that sort of thing. Um, so that's kind of where the idea got born out of, you know, it, it became apparent that like you could do this with technology, right? And that's not to say like I came up with the the, the idea that you know you could um, you could deliver cyber uh, awareness training via um, you know, via e-learning. It just uh, it just seemed like there was a gap for it that has that that kind of that, that kind of hadn't been filled yet. And you know when I look back at the market then, you know we were you know we were certainly uh, we were just seeing the we were just seeing the likes of one button there before, like very very early stage mm -hmm. for kind of like the kind of you know the, the heavy sort of drive from there before so there was the, the there was the us vendors coming into the market at a very early stage there was gdpr on the horizon a couple of years out um and for me personally like um i was kind of like just just it was like critical point for me because um i just had my first kid so it was either um do it then or just you know, or just stay in the career I was doing, which was you know, which is great. You know, senior salesperson, a great firm, making really good money, and um, 
I just, you know, my, 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 I, I took the option to, to start the company because I just thought, well, I could, you know, maybe I can come back to this if, you know, whether it's with this company or whether it's with another company, but maybe I can come back to this anyway. Whereas the opportunity to start something is, 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 is only going to get smaller as time goes on. Yeah. No, my, wife with, my wife was not happy with my decision. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. I can certainly relate. <laughs> Yeah, especially you know, you go from something that's very you know very predictable, very steady state, you know, and yeah. and uh, secure to starting your own thing. Um, so take me through the early days. I mean, you know, you kind of take the step off the ledge and get this thing going. What were the early days like? So, I mean, we like we we took some friends and family investment. Um, mm -hmm. And by the way, I had no experience. I had no experience of doing this. So. I just kind of learned along the way as to, to how we do this. So we worked with um, we worked with a, a, an independent uh, software uh, boutique company in Manchester uh, to build the version one of eSecure, um, and we did that on like a shoestring budget. Um, and in its initial, uh, you know, in its initial version, it was security awareness training and simulated phishing. So that was what came out of the box, um, and. You know, I, I probably did what you know most uh, you know most people do. I mean, I had a background in sales, so you kind of lean into what you're good at. So, you know, I think if you're a salesperson, then you can go out and win some business. You know, if you've got a product, you can go out and win some business. Um, whereas if you're like maybe if you're tech minded, you're probably going to end up with a better product at the start, but struggle with the uh, commercial side. So, you know, I was like, right, we've got a product, and we had to go out and sell it because. You know, we didn't have any. You know, we didn't have any investment in the company outside of a. You know, what I was putting in a small amount of uh, a small amount of investment, like I said, from from friends and family. So, um, the the good thing in those early days is that um, obviously I had a big network of people that um, I'd sold to in the past. You know, I had good relationships with, um, and I don't know if you've experienced this from 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 when you know when when you know when you started. Uh, at the agent, but you, you, know, you can kind of lean on those relationships at first and you get kind of that first bump of initial orders. And really that kind of gave us the injection of capital that could take us to the next stage. So, um, yeah, we went, we went very quickly to, you know, from two staff to like five staff. Um, and then, um, I mean, how far do you want me to, I, I could like you suggest not, I guess that all. So. <laughs> no, this is great. Keep going. I love it. I mean, because there's so many, you know, the, it, it just it brings back so many memories for me, right? Yeah, early days yeah. and yeah, no, please keep going because this, this is great. But that early stage was really, um, yeah, just like I look back on that now, um, and I just think, how did how did that ever work? <laughs> like how how you know how did I ever you know how did I ever manage the stress? Because it looks it it, it, it stress it, it feels stressful when I look back on it. You know, I'm like. I wouldn't want to be in that position right now. But, you know, I also look back at it and think it was it was really good fun. Like, it was really good fun kind of having something that was, you know, a total unknown at that time and just going out and kind of testing the water with it. And then, you know, you really find out, you really find out very, very quickly, like, you know, if you're, if you're selling, like, I don't know, if you're selling, um, if you're selling pen testing and you work for NCC Group, people will pick up the phone to you. And they will talk because because they know the brand, mm -hmm. and they will buy off you because they trust the brand, and you know they they you've almost made the sale before you start. Whereas when you're out there selling something that's completely, you know, completely brand new, you know, you have no, um, I guess, brand recognition. You, you know, you've got no kind of goodwill in the bank or anything like that. Then you really find out whether people are going to buy your product or not. You know, because. Uh, because <laughs> they have to buy it on the on the on the basis of how good the product is on nothing else so so yeah that was that so, so we, we we had that kind of initial period where we um where we kind of bootstrapped the company um we were super small but we 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 kind of punched above our weight um and then um we we took uh this is about like kind of three you know three three years in we took on board a, a um an angel investor who was someone that I'd, I'd worked with um, at AppSense, which was the, the first job I got out of mm -hmm. uh, university. 
uh, after the insurance after the insurance stuff. My first proper graduate job. So someone I someone I've worked with previously. So he came on board, um, and that cash injection was um, was kind of thing. It was the it was a real pivotal point for the company because um, it allowed us to do a whole bunch of things. So it allowed us to bring development in house, which was massive. You know, mm -hmm. you know, having our own development team was just you know night and day between what we could do. Um, it also allowed us to grow the sales team, which is you know super important. Um, but it it also allowed us to you know we took a look at the market at that point and we we were trying to kind of work out like where we fit, right? So like you know we we're obviously uh, in this market where we were uh, uh, trying to sell to the mid market. We were trying to sell direct, and um, we were going up against uh, the likes of Wombat. Um, I think they've been acquired by Proofpoint maybe at that point, um, and they're like, uh, but mainly no before. Mm -hmm. So we looked at that and we said, well, you know, we can continue that. We can continue operating like this, um, but this isn't a fight we're going to win long term. Right. So, yeah. you know, we kind of we looked at the, where where we were strong, and we we brought on maybe I think between ten and twenty MSPs, and that wasn't because we'd gone out and targeted managed service providers. It was just because they'd come on, they, they'd seen our product, they liked. The, the tool. focus on automation, the ease of use, and they picked the product up and gone and started using it. So we were like, right, well, maybe there's something. So we, we pivoted the business from being, you know, a direct product selling to the mid market to being a channel led product selling via distribution to MSPs. Right? So it's quite a paradigm shift of, you know, what this business looks like. We're selling the same product essentially, but how we were going to market completely changed. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, and luckily it was a great move. <laughs> luckily it worked out. Yeah. So how, how difficult was that that pivot, right? Because you know, there's multi tendency. There's enablement. There's uh, you know different, you know, there's different business objectives, right? From the from the MSP versus selling direct. I mean, how how difficult was that for you guys to transition? So it was like I, I, so I'll, I'll I'll say it was very difficult. I'll caveat that and say we had a we had a real um, we had a real luck with the timing of what we were doing because uh, because we were moving from um, an outsourced development function to an insourced development development function we took um, we took the opportunity to rewrite the, the platform from the ground up like we literally we we basically like put version one in the bin and just built you know and, and, and migrated to version two. Yeah. And because we were doing that, it meant that we we didn't have to be held back by any of the legacy uh, code that we had. So we built version two with multi-tenancy in mind, with all of the things with a you know a, an API that can connect into you know cloud market distribution platform platforms. You know, so we were able we were able to like almost make those decisions from like a greenfield standpoint, um, and that really helped. That you know that was absolutely. Uh, you, you know, one of those things is just timing, right? It just it just happened that it fell at the same time that we decided to pivot. Um, but that was so important because it meant that we weren't trying to sell a like a non MSP friendly product into the MSP market. We we went in with like everything that we'd learned and a new and a new you know a new shiny version of our our product that had all the all the things that um, uh, we knew our partners wanted. Awesome. So. You guys have, have scaled, you know, exceptionally well over the last uh, couple of years. Um, you know, what what's let's let's be a little bit more forward thinking now. Like, so what what's what's this platform look like? What do you look like in in three years from now? So, well, you know, three years will go by very very quickly. <laughs> right. yeah. so I'd love to say I'd love to say it's going to be uh, totally different and stuff, and you know, but. Um, you know, I know the way development works. I know the way I know the way the market moves really well. Um, and I can tell you, I can tell you, like how how we're looking at the market, how, how we as like you secure are looking at what we want to do. So, um, you know, we're a, uh, if you were to look at like the product set, you'd say like we do security awareness, uh, cyber and compliance training. We do simulated phishing. We do policy management, and we do breach detection. Right. So we have. A portfolio not dissimilar to uh, ID agents, right? So, um, so we have a, a, a portfolio of point 
point solution products. Um, but on top of that, we have um, our risk, our human risk management algorithm, which is basically, you know, we, we looked at it and said, these are, you know, these are, these are the tools that you use to solve the problem, right? But um, what what is it that you need to understand to, to really be able to have insight into what's going on in your business? Um, and so what we did is we said, well, let's gather all the data from all the products and we'll, we'll put that together and we'll, we'll give some meaningful metrics out the, out the back of that. So, you know, what we're really looking at doing in, you know, and have been doing is helping organizations to understand the, the human risk element within their business. And then they use the tools to kind of re reduce that risk. You know, so it's always that kind of that, uh, I guess, that mentality of, you know, you know, the, the point solutions don't solve the, the problem the customer has. The problem the customer has is they want to they grow or they want to, you know, increase profit or they want to, you know, they want to increase headcount, they want to reduce risk. And, you know, we help organizations reduce risk. Um, so what does that look like in the next three years? Is, you know, we really want to expand on, um, you know, how we help businesses do that. So the human element, um, you know, for, for you know for all businesses is just becoming more difficult to manage. You know, I'm I don't know how old you are, Kevin, but you know, <clears throat> you know when I when I started off in IT, you know, there's compare, comparing that to now, you know, in terms of uh, the products we use. Um, you know the products we bring into the workplace. You know the the products we take home, the working from home. Just everything's kind of blended now into into one, and, and that's just one facet of how things have changed. So I think as as, as times move, that will only get more difficult uh, as we go. And you know for us, it's the uh, you know we want to make sure we, we we keep up with that, but also keep providing solutions to to help you know help our partners uh, become you know you know. It's about helping your partners protect their clients, of course. You know, so helping you providing products that fit into their portfolio, provide value, help their products, and, and, and help them improve their business as well. So I know, and, you know, I know you, I know you'll know that. And uh, um, yeah, so in, in three years, I think you know we're on a we're on we're on a growth path that is like double every year. So it's like double double. You know, yeah. If we can continue that over the next three years, that'd be incredible. You know, my my expectation is perhaps that you know. It, it becomes a little bit harder. The bigger you get, the harder it becomes to kind of double the size of the business, which, sure. you know, perhaps that's okay. But um, we haven't got to the point where we haven't done it yet. So um, ask me, ask me in three months. <laughs> I, I put a I put a note down and do that. No, but like I, I you're you're so right, and I, I see so many technologies, I see so many vendors, um, that and it's it's a challenge, right? Because you have to be extremely well funded. Or you have to have had enough time in the space, and you know, have to build up enough capital to be able to do these kind of pivots. And the fact that you guys have were able to hit pause and kind of dream it all up again, right, and build for where you wanted to go, um, that that's that's huge, right? And the fact that you guys are at a, a platform, you know, kind of that platform approach, layering in the human element. I mean, that's that's exactly where, you know, if I was a prognosticator several years ago, I would have absolutely said this is exactly where it was going now. COVID and acceleration of, of you know, distributed teams and stuff like that aside, I mean, it, it's exactly where this this market was going a couple of years ago. And you guys, you know, from a timing perspective, sounds like you guys have nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. Yeah, I think, you, you know, and that's probably more luck than uh, judgment. <laughs> but time, time, is, time is crucial, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, we made the, we made those calls at the right time, but I I also think that you know one of the I think that we went into the MSP market with the right attitude as well. You know, we we, we went in um, with you know having the product having the product first and, and and having an actual product for that market. I think made a huge difference to, to how we told our story when we when when we went in with it. Um, you know, maybe there are maybe there are other products that that, that maybe aren't suited for the for, for that market, but then they kind of go, we want a piece of that the MSP market, so we'll kind of dress it up and say that it is fit for that, and then it soon, you know, when you kind of peel back the curtain, it um, it soon becomes apparent that it's it, it's kind of not. And you know, some of the things you mentioned earlier about the, the kind of architecture of the product, and you know, certainly things like the licensing model of the products, that they're, they're things that matter, you know, immensely to, to to the MSP community. And you know, so we we kind of we went in with you know the right 
the right story to tell and you know and like a fair like a fair and honest story to say like look you know the pricing model's got to be right the the, the management model's got to be right the way in which we support you's got to be right and um and and that kind of that that made it a lot you know a lot easier i think um we don't get much you know we, we haven't had uh, a, a great deal of pushback in terms of how we've how we've approached the market and and you know and it's kind of you know, surprising. It always surprises me, like how how smoothly it went. Because even though, um, you know, even though it was designed to be that way, you, you know, we um, we weren't coming from a, we we weren't a we weren't a team of kind of MSP experts, right? We were a team of um, you know a team of salespeople and developers, you know, that that, that saw this gap in the market, saw this gap in the market to do this, and we and we. And we and we thought maybe that maybe that's what helped. Maybe the fact that we we didn't have any kind of preconceptions about what it should look like, and we just started with the what do the you know, what what does this what does this part of the market want? You know, let's let's start with that and let's build the product accordingly. Yeah. So you're you're, you're getting to critical mass. You're at critical mass, and things are going exceptionally well. You're going to double, double, double the next three years. Anything keep you up at night at this point? <laughs> do you know what? Um, I would the th the things that the things um I don't worry about things in the same way that I used to. I don't know if you I don't know if you if if you ever felt like that, but you know certainly uh, like I can re I can I can remember you know a number of times where like I have been seriously seriously like stressed out about work. Right, I can remember. I can remember those times vividly. You know, and you know when you when you when your company's early stage and it's operating much more hand to mouth, that can happen. Um, but now, you know, kind of now, not so much. I mean, I'm lucky um, that I had. A, you know, the, the team I work with here is just phenomenal. Like, and I know everyone says that, but you know, if you've got a great team, you've got a great team, right? So, yeah. um, these guys make. Uh, you know they do a great job with the with our customers, with our partners, with our with, with our disties, um, and uh, they make my life pretty. They make my life a lot easier than uh, than maybe maybe it is for other for other CEOs. I don't know, um, but yeah, and a lot of these guys have been with me since you know very early stage. You secure certainly uh, you know three, four, five years now. Um, so that's you know that that's really helped. That's awesome. Yeah, you look, you, you build a right, the right team and, you know, anything can happen. It sounds like you've done a good job with that. So any, uh, you know, any words of wisdom or pieces of advice, things that the, the industry should be thinking about, you know, given today's environment, macroeconomics, security, you know, landscape threats, is there one piece of advice that you could share with the audience? Other than chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Too. That's all anyone talks about right now. Um, <clears throat> no, I think I think security is a, security is like you know it's it's to a large extent the things that were true, you know, three five, you know, ten years ago are still true today in terms yeah. of. You know, I think people need to be, um, you know, sensible, uh, cautious, um, and they need to they need to. You know they need to take they need to take the, the, the security of the data seriously, and and that's not that's not going to change. But I think that the, the challenge for people now is that there's just so many more avenues that you know they can you know people can get to them, and uh, people can look to um, yeah just people can look to take advantage of them, and I think that's uh, that's something that you know is a responsibility not only for you know or you know all people who engaging with technology, but also, you know, companies like you secure and anyone working in cyber that we have that responsibility for that to be able to produce the products that um, that can that can you know make that process a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, I think um, I think I think I think without doubt this year is going to be dominated by AI and chat GPT and you know whether it's pretty hard for me it's pretty pretty unclear right now how much of that is kind of noise and how much of it is genuine. I guess um, I guess we'll find out as the year goes. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Well, look, I, I really appreciate you taking some time, especially toward the end of your day. There, said uh, everyone's already left the building and 
you know, as a good, good CEO, you're the last one standing, uh, you know, you know, putting in the, uh, the time and the hours, but, uh, where can, where can people follow you? Where can people find the company, you know, learn more about you guys? Uh, so if you come to our website at, uh, usecure.io, um, that's the central point of course, for all information and, um, for our partner community, we'll be at CompTIA London and CompTIA in Las Vegas this year. Um, as well as other events, but kind of they're definitely the, the main two where we'll likely see uh, see you. Awesome. Hopefully we get the, a chance to meet up with those. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely like I'm definitely coming to the Las Vegas one. Like I told my wife today, I was like, there's no way I'm missing this one. <laughs> right on, right on. Charles, look, I think I can't thank you enough for being the uh the first guest of twenty 23 and uh you set the bar pretty darn high we've got i don't know like 35 or 40 more of these uh this year so uh they have to they have to live up to the uh, the hype or the bar that you just set so uh well done well done well, thanks very much really enjoyed it awesome thanks thanks everyone for uh you know tuning in we'll have another one of these uh next week's definitely check us out on all the streaming uh services the podcast services and the channel ceo newsletter and so then we'll uh you know be safe and we'll talk to you next time.